Our next guest is Russ Goodacre. Everybody has a story. You know, everybody has something they've got to deal with. You've got to overcome. And Russ is a great example of that. He is the author of the book Tackling Dyslexia and Learning Disabilities, a memoir by Russell Goodacre, former manager of uh, Shepherd uh, University's football team. Russ, good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Good morning. Thank you, Rob, Matt, and Jonathan for having me on. Um, I'm really excited to talk about my book, and thanks again for allowing me to come on this morning. Absolutely. Russ, when were you diagnosed and became aware of your dyslexia? So when I was three, I was at a small um, private school called Friends Media School in Ironsville, Maryland, and my preschool teacher noticed um, some, some signs where I wasn't socializing with my classmates didn't quite pick up reading or comprehending what I was reading at an early age. And then after that, we kind of got more testing done. And then pretty much right around there was when we kind of knew I had dyslexia, um, auditory processing disorder, and a reading comprehension issue. So that's where that pretty much started and where at that point I got a lot of help through um, throughout the years through speech and language, occupational therapy, and um, after first grade, I transferred to a school called the Lab School of Washington in Washington, D.C. It's a special education school for students with learning disabilities. Um, went there from second grade through high school. And from there, it, was, um, it really helped me out, become a better uh, reader, get more acclimated, and become, uh, it helped me become the person who I am today. And I can, uh, you know, I can definitely you know, get through um, my issues with reading and writing. And, you know, now I've written a book. So it's quite remarkable how far I've come. I'm very appreciative of all the people who have helped me out along the way. What uh, could these schools offer you that the local public schools could not, Russ? So smaller class sizes, um, like more attention. So, for example, when I was uh, in kindergarten, I did half year at Friends Meeting School and half the year at Kemptown elementary school to see if Frederick, Frederick County Public Schools could uh, potentially help me out, and it did not go well at all. So with that, the class sizes at Kemptown were about 25 or 30 to 1 while at the lab school. Um, it was about around 8 or around 10 to 1, essentially, which gave me a lot more attention on my individual needs and how I could um, access the information better that was being taught to me. And... Um, and it really benefited me quite a bit. And, of course, I get, like, you know, one-on-one -on -one speech of language or group speech of language. We, like, work together. So, like, the, the more attention that I got helped me out dramatically. And how is Shepherd University equipped to handle your issue with dyslexia? Man, that's a great question. So, when I came to Shepherd, I visited a few times. Um, I visited my junior year, kind of got a tour of the place. Had a, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, and then I also got to meet with the Disability Support Services Office, um, and they, they kind of ran through what they gave for uh, accommodations for classes. So, like, I always struggled with uh, tests and quizzes, so I would get, would get, like, time and a half on tests, and I would get, like, my own, like, uh, my own room for testing at the uh, DSS Center so I can just focus not to, like, look around the classroom seeing other students finishing way ahead of me and, like, give myself self doubts about, like, if I'm not doing well or I don't know the content, that sort of thing. And then I also got a lot of help from the Trio Sports Services Office um, at Shepherd. Um, they gave me a lot of help. Um, they also work with students um, who are first generation, uh, low income backgrounds, as well as students with learning disabilities. So they were absolutely uh, crucial in my success academically at Shepherd. Um, they gave me so much support, so much help, and I can't thank them enough. And of course, being around incredible people um, with the football program. Uh, they were very supportive. They allowed me to grow dramatically in the football program. Um, the radio station, uh, 89.7 WSAC Shepherdstown, with me, uh, Mike McGough, and uh, former WRNR standout Matt Crawford. Shout out to him. <laughs> He's, uh, we did a show together for a year. We're co sports directors. That's my guy. Um, but yeah, so a lot of things fell into place for me, and I was uh, fortunate and blessed to be around people who genuinely cared and wanted me to um, succeed. Now, did you ever have this guy, Matt Miller, for class when you were at Shepherd? Funny story, yes, I did. But before that, on one of my visits, it was um, October of 2013. I got to sit in the class. And um, at the lab school, they recommend students sit in the class at a university that they're looking at. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll go to a class um, in the evening and whatnot. So the one class in the Recreational Leisure Studies Department that was offered in the evening on a Tuesday night was uh, Matt Miller's class. 
So I got to sit in there as a senior in high school, um, raced up from D.C. in rush hour traffic, got there in time. Um, you know, it was pretty cool. I got to like watch uh, him teach a class, and they were doing a broadcast from the 2012 season, um, Concord versus Shepard, and you get to like, watch the students um, get to do like a – you know, a simulated broadcast, and you give them critiques and whatnot, and uh, it was pretty fun. And I and I knew if I went to Shepherd, you know, I would I would take a class, and I did it uh, my sophomore year in the fall of 2015. So had a lot of fun doing that. And Matt was very gracious. He spent a lot of time talking to my mom and sister after the class, and really wanted to you know know me more, know our thoughts with Shepherd and how he could help. So Matt Miller is a very influential uh, person, and when it came to like my journey at Shepherd, I can't thank him enough. Matt, I expect to see a little tear in your eye at some point along the way here. I am, uh, I'm holding it in right now, so I don't want to cry on TV. But no, uh, Russ, thank you so much, and it's just been a pleasure to uh, get to know you and and to watch you grow. And and when you reached out about writing a book and and wanting to include uh, Vic and Jason and I in our calls of that 2015 season and and so forth in it, uh, it's it's uh, it's just uh, wow an honor. And so I uh, appreciate it. Thank you, and can't wait to uh, get my hands on this book and to read it and uh, and to see uh, just all the things that you've gone through how did being involved with the the shepherd football program really uh, help you to grow and to develop and enhance your time there at shepherd man um just being in a very close-knit group of uh people where you know we all had a common goal and that really was beneficial and of course you had to like while our football roster is like 100 people at Shepherd, you know, you have a lot of, uh, you know, you get to be in like, you know, group meetings when it's like position stuff. You get to know people quite a bit that way too. And of course, being in the locker room and traveling together for a whole season, you know, you get to like know each other pretty well and have a lot of like interesting talks, get to learn about each other. So a lot of that was just a uh, very beneficial for me and just, you know, getting to like, you know, obviously with football, we all have the same similarities. We all want to win. We all have the same desires and just like, the one thing about Shepard that I love the most is that a lot of people care about each other, especially in the East of Brandle, where whether it's, you know, Shepherdstown or Martinsburg or Parker's Ferry or anywhere in the area, the people care. And, and they're very prideful about who they are and where they're from. And that always stood out to me. And I've always appreciated that because, like, people, you know, they'll reach out to you and, like, say, hey, how you doing? And, like, is there anything I can do to help you? Or, um, like, hey, I was thinking about you sort of thing. Like, that always, like, stood out to me. That's why I love um, the area, especially the football program, you know, Coach McCook, Coach Tater, Hassan Mori, for example, three incredibly impactful people that I got to work with, like, very close up all the time. And, um, yeah, they, they made me feel welcome. And, you know, they they knew when I came with the football team, I didn't quite know, like, the full-on, like, organized, like, like stuff of football. So, either like, they taught me, they allowed me to grow and just, I was very fortunate, again, to be around those kind of people that really, like, cared and wanted me to grow the best of my ability. And some great athletes as well. I mean, you were there at, at the, the, the top of the, the Shepherd football program that, that has continued to play at that level. Yeah, absolutely. You know, seeing, you know, with Tyson and, um, you know, Joey Fisher, for example, and Ronnie Brown, what they've done the last two years, and, you know, Coach McCook now being the head coach, I mean, it's great to see that the program is still growing after I've left and after many other phenomenal student athletes have graduated. So it shows that they're still growing. And of course they're getting better fully funded, which is, I think is we all know is the big uh, tough part they have to overcome when it comes to like getting to the final fours, national championship games. So, I mean, hopefully one day knocking on wood, they can finally like get all the way there and win the whole thing. Cause that would be really sick. And, um, but yeah, I mean, otherwise just, you know, that program means a lot to me. Um, because of you know how well we did but more importantly um the people involved that that's always the best part and one of my favorite parts that i talked about in the book was um in 2015 we had a very um emotional win at concord for those who don't remember in 2014 shepherd missed out in the playoff after losing the senior day regular season finale at home versus um yeah, versus concord and that ended up you know going eight and two and then we wanted to go down there the next year's absolutely like run out of the building which we didn't, but we still won by seven. And we were all, like, so emotionally happy and whatnot. And I remember going to Coach McCook's office. It was either the Monday or Tuesday after the game, and we were just talking. And I'd always go to his office and ask him, like, what are the cool things about coaching? Like, you know, trying to, like, learn more about it because I did go into coaching, which I ended up not. But just wanted to pick his brain. So there was one day that I asked him, like, after this week, I'm like, 
so what is your favorite part about coaching and whatnot? And in my back, I'm thinking, okay, you know, being a shepherd, you win a lot, you make a lot of deep playoff runs. I'm like, that's what I was thinking. But he told me probably the most profound thing that I've ever heard, and it was uh, the thing thing about coaching was the people. And it's pretty much, you know, he's listened to you know, all the students, all the faculty, all the community, everybody there made a difference. And that's what made going to Shepherd very special. And with that, when I was writing my book, um, in, in one of the chapters, the first Shepherd chapter, because Shepherd is two chapters, essentially. Um, I start off each chapter with a quote, kind of like with a theme of like what the, um, what the chapter is going to entail, like what the main themes are. So I went with that as like one of the quotes of, okay, I want to start off with this. So people are, okay, this is what Shepherd is. This is how amazing the people are and how well knit the community is. So just, I wanted to phrase that. So pretty much when I did that, I did a whole quote for every chapter, which you'll see. And that's kind of inspired by my favorite TV show, The Wire, where at the beginning of each episode, they have a quote that is um, showed on a screen and then it's later on said by a character as the episode goes on. So pretty much every chapter in my book has one of those. Russ, let me just tell you, you have great taste for a young person because that is one of the ten best TV shows ever made, and maybe it's top five. Five, like, top the five. The Wire's phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, right? top five. You know, you know, my advice, it's the goat. I mean, it's in the, uh, you know, the, the Sopranos, the Breaking Bad, the Better Call yeah. Saul of the world, but it's definitely, you know, number one in my book, in my opinion, because it talks about the humanity of what Baltimore City has gone through for decades. So that's, yes. that, that's my take. I know a lot of people disagree with me, but hey. It was further yeah. enhanced to me when my son's first full-time job out of college was working in the uh, Maryland uh, state uh, system with the in the city of Baltimore's courthouse, and you encounter all that stuff firsthand from from both ends of it, and you learn sure. you learn about the corruption, you learn about the the number of innocent people in jail, and the number of guilty people who aren't, mm-hmm. and. Uh, and I don't think you have to single Baltimore out as the only major city going through that, but it certainly right. it certainly is one of the leading ones that that has issues. Uh, and that show I thought captured it throughout its what five seasons or whatever it was as perfectly as it could. Great show, John yep. Bodwell. Hey Russ, let me ask you. So with the book and everything, and I I want to read it. Everything everything you said has been phenomenal. What are you doing now? What are you doing post college? Post I, I guess some we had heard. I guess you went to graduate school at Georgetown. What what do you, what is your career? What are you doing now? Uh, first, thanks for the uh, kind words, Jonathan. So yes, I did go to Georgetown. Uh, studied in the sports industry management program there at um, at Georgetown. Graduated in December twenty twenty um, during the height of the COVID pandemic, and then part of that um, I did work in the public health industry for a few months and um, kind of in the COVID response, kind of helped out in different ways, um, both locally and nationally. Um, and then with that, you know, I, I, I had some success, had some hardships, and that kind of helped me and, like, really inspired to write this book, essentially, where it was just like, okay, maybe there's something that people can learn from this experience, and, you know, maybe it can help them out. Like, especially after, like, succeeding in, you know, school and that, knowing that, you know, you can still have hardships when you leave school and, like, go into workforce. So that's another chapter within itself. And now I work as a program analyst for the General Services Administration, GSA, um, in D.C. So that's what I'm, I'm pretty much up to now, working from home. Um, again, very appreciative of everything. And, um, yeah, and then, of course, writing the book, too, has been a, a nice two-year process. Um, a lot of time uh, talking about with family, going through edits, uh, multiple edits, working with um, – Book Baby Self Publishing, shout out to them. They are phenomenal with um, everything being on board with the self publishing process for me. And um, I can't thank them enough. They've been absolutely remarkable with just getting the whole thing ready to go. Russell Goodacre is our guest here on the program. Go ahead, John. Well, I, that's. Um... That's phenomenal. Do you have any, um, so you're with GSA now, you work from home. I know they're transitioning a lot of federal workers back. Or Mayor Bowser of D.C., she's requesting the federal government send everybody back to work in the city so they can spend money in the city. Do you have any other aspirations? Is this is this the end-all, be-all? Do you have, a, I mean, you, you've, you've done so many amazing things. Is there something else? Is there a dream job, a goal job, something like that that you have going on? Um. I would say I love sports. Obviously, I think everyone knows that at this point. Um, just realizing as life goes on, the work-life balance is now pretty important for my life, and I kind of experienced that with COVID and everything. I love working for GSA. It's been phenomenal, and they um, 
you know, they're very supportive, and this is for me. I, I want to stay here, like, full time. I, well, I love sports. Maybe help out, like, with local parks and rec, like, on occasion, but, like, this is what I do for, like, what I want to do um, for my career at this point. Russ has written a book called Tackling Dyslexia and Learning Disabilities. His name is Russell Goodacre. And, Russ, where can we find the book? Great question. So for those who are watching on the TV10 Facebook stream, I have put the link in the comment section so you can find it there. You can find it via awesome. bookbaby.com if you type up my name and the book. Um, the audiobook is out there now, and it is live. So if you buy the audiobook, you will get it now. The ebook and soft covers are also there. You can purchase the ebooks will be made available on Friday, May 5th, and the soft covers will be made available on Friday, May the 19th. Um, you can also find my book on other retailers like Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble, and many others. Um, yeah, so pretty much I'm very excited for just the whole rollout, and I hope a lot of people are going to enjoy my story, and hopefully people can learn whether, you know, you're, you're a student who has dyslexia or a learning disability, whether you're an adult and never had got it diagnosed, and maybe you can get tested, and maybe it'll help you out later on. Because there's a story I bring up in um, the first lab school chapter where um, Dexter Manley, who played for the uh, Washington Redskins now Commanders, he, he had dyslexia. And he never knew about it until he was an adult when um, he got tested after he – so everyone knows the game where Joe Theismann breaks his leg after Lawrence Taylor sacks and, like, actually destroys his leg. Mm -hmm. um, so Dexter mainly had a second grade reading comprehension. He was really terrified about, like, not being able to do anything outside of football. And he had a really bad, like, speech impediment, dyslexia and everything, and where he couldn't read signs on the, on the D.C. Bellway when he would drive around. And he had a hard time picking up plays. He had great coaches like Joe Gibbs and Richie Pettibon and teammates who really took care and, like, tried to help him as best he can. And then, you know, he got tested. And then he went to the Lab School Washington Night School program, which was created by uh, the founder, Sally Smith, which was a school at night for adults with learning disabilities who were never caught early on with, like, with learning disabilities. And they were, like, able to, like, um, get all the adults like up to speed and whatnot, and he was able to get into like a, a grade level, a uh, reading uh, level at that point. So like that's one example of how an adult can uh, benefit from my book. And, yeah, that's pretty much um, Russell, what I'm looking forward to. Did you, yeah. did you uh, have uh, any issues with dyscalculia as well? I did not. Um, I, I do talk about all the forms of learning disabilities in my book, especially in Chapter 1, for those who are kind of curious of, like, the evolution of learning disabilities and, like, what each learning disability is. Um, but I do not know. And uh, let me say, first and foremost, uh, thank you for embedding your, your book on our Facebook chat page. So you, you're already, like, in the 99th percentile of guests because <laughs> most, most would not think to do that. So thank you kindly. You're an impressive young man. I've enjoyed this interview uh, tremendously. And... Uh, I got to tell you, uh, I'm blown away here by what you've done. Great stuff, man. No, thank you very much. And again, thank you for allowing me to come on this morning. And um, yeah, I'm really excited that you guys are really engaged. And um, it, it's been remarkable that I've actually made it this far and actually wrote a book about it. I mean, never would have thought in my life I would have uh, <laughs> done this. Not even in my wildest dreams. But yeah, here we are. We'll see what happens. And um, thanks again. Thank you, Russell.